Now the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I'm going fishing with Bill Dance today. Hello everybody. Guess what fishing lure catches everything from bluegill to shark and can be fished from a foot deep to over a hundred feet or more. And yes, you can hop it, drag it, twitch it, jig it, and even swim it. Oh, did someone say a jig? Yep, that's it, a jig. And as we all know, jigs come in all sizes, weights, and colors, depending on the species you're fishing for. Today, we'll be bass fishing, and the jig we'll be using is called a swimming jig, swim jig for short. It's a specialty jig for swimming in the same types of water that you would fish a spinner bait, a running a shallow crankbait, or a bladed swim jig. Now, many times with better results. Tell you what, you want to go see? I do. Come on, let's go. I read somewhere years ago a jig got its name because you jigged it for best results. Well, that may be true with some jigs and some situations, but with this one, it sure ain't. What you're doing here, you're using a slow, slight pumping retrieve in shallow water, looking for impulse strikes. But once you get it out over the deeper depths, you drop it and add a little pump in action as you reel it and let it drop. Reel it and let it drop and add a pump in action. Reel it a little more and let it drop a little deeper. And the strike will occur as the bait, or I should say jig, falls. So you've got to be ready and have your rod tip in the correct position. Tuffy. Whoa. Tough. And there it is. You see it, you see it again, didn't you? Old shiny and white. Pretty fish. Fat too. Where I see that vegetation, I try to, what I try to do is just swim it across the top of it. Then when I get right on the, the edge of it, I just let it fall. Maybe twitch it a little bit and let it fall. I've always got my rod at a position where when he hits it, he's hitting it on the fall, I can set the hook. I don't want my rod way back up here because I don't have any setting power. I want it sitting right out here where I can hit it when, because he just don't when he hits it. Just a little tick when he hits it on the fall. Now, sometimes when I'm swimming it over the top of that stuff, they're up, they'll hit it right on just as I'm, I'm pumping it like that, I'm just kind of swimming it, reeling it, swimming it, reeling it, swimming it, just like that. But once I get to the edge, I just drop it. And maybe pump it, just swim it just a little bit and let it free fall. Swim it a little bit and let it free fall. Bill Dance Outdoors is sponsored in part by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Rebel, catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine, go boldly.
Today's Conditions Log is brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Come experience the kind of beauty that can only be made in Tennessee. Go online today for your free Tennessee vacation guide. and he's tugging. Oh, come out on that boat. That is a hunk. Come here, begging. Up oh, there. Easy. Easy. Come here, let me get my hands in. Oh, what a fish. Woo! Look at that one. Nice. Big old fat fishy. Woo! Hey, look at this. You're looking at a casting jig and a swim jig. Now look closely between the two. The hook eye and the angle of the line tie. The casting jig will be difficult to fish or swim through cover and it will have the tendency to hang simply because of the 60 degree line pull or the hook eye. Now look at the swim jig that has approximately a 30 degree line tie. This puts the hook eye and the hook in direct line with each other allowing it to be more weedless and improves your strike catch ratio. Oh, oh look at here. I see you that there. Where are you going? Long slanky baby there. I've torn this little chunk to pieces, but I've caught quite a few fish on it. I'm on a ridge. You can see that the grass line coming right down through here. We're keeping our boat in a depth of about 10 to 15 feet, casting into about, oh, one to three feet and working the bait out. You see that? And then as it comes out, it just drops straight down. As I come off into that deeper water, I'm just letting the jig fall. Went from three, right on into 15. And that's the kind of banks they're laying, staying on. I'm swimming it right out to here, and when I get it right here, I just let it fall. But there's your vegetation, there's a drop right there. Hey, speaking of graphs, my good friend Jason Christie, pro angler and spokesman for Garmin Electronics, was asked this question, and here's what he had to say. When I'm in search mode, it doesn't matter if it's bass or crappie, I have two screens, traditional chirp, clear view, side view. This lets me cover a lot of water quickly. Once I find the fish, I go to the front, I can use panoptics, I can catch the fish that's out away from the boat in any direction, and I still use traditional chirp to catch them when they're underneath the boat. Thanks, Jason. That was a good answer. Today's show is sponsored in part by Quantum Rods and Reels. Mystic Lubricants, Lubrication Domination. And Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest.
Today's show is sponsored in part by Strand, the standard of dependability since 1958. Lurlock, turning the tackle world upside down. And Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Today's equipment log is brought to you in part by Gamakatsu, because the fish of a lifetime only comes once in a lifetime. Buster. Pretty fish. Dive. Oh, yes. Let me get my hands in your face. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. That's a nice one. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Mm, mm, mm. Woo! Didn't take long to go down. Okay, what was I going to tell y'all? You know, we touched on this just a minute ago. My best shallow water presentation is a slow retrieve using slight rod tip actions to create a series of small ups and downs or rises and falls as the jig swims forward. Once I get it out beyond the cover, I let it free fall. And then I create more rod tip actions. Not a lot, but letting it free fall, twitching it again, swimming it a little bit more, letting it free fall again. Here in depths of three to six feet, a quarter or three eighths ounce, swimming jig works best. If deeper depths are needed, I'll go to a half ounce. This is something you just need to experiment with. Okay, here's something. Let's talk about color for a minute. Normally, when I'm fishing this way, I want to use the color that is most visible to the bass. And one color I find is mighty hard to beat when the visibility is say 18 inches or more is white, especially in a lake that has an abundance of shad. And I use it with a white trailer. I like a white trailer on the back. And the trailer I like is Bass Pro Shops Swimming Elite Chunk. It's, it's got two little legs that create quite a bit of action on the back. But white is extremely visible, puts out a tremendous amount of reflection. And Bass Pro Shops Swimming Elite Chunk, or Chunk is white and their swimming jig, white, has got some reflection, uh, reflective qualities in the skirt itself, but it is white and puts out a lot of reflection. Now in off-color conditions, I like darker colors, like black and blue, and it's always smart to have several colors and experiment with each one when the action is slow. Uh-oh, look here, got one on. A big fish too. Look, come in here. Oh, boy. That was a nice one. Whoa, yes, sir. Easy does it, old boy. Is that a fat one there?
The Bill Dance Question and Answer of the Week is brought to you by Mystic Lubricants and their complete line of JT4 Marine products. A full line of products for your full line of pursuits. Visit mysticlube.com today. What's the best way to pick out a backlash? Well, I never backlash, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> it happens to everybody. First, you want to lock the reel down with your drag. Then you want to put your thumb hard against the spool and reel extremely hard. Free spool the line, letting the line back out. This forward reeling reverses the line loops. You're basically reeling out the backlash. Sometimes you might have to repeat the process. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning provided by Power Pole, the original shallow water anchor. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series, chart plotter sonar combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Panoptics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. When it comes to enticing a fish to hit your lure, feeling the rush from the fight and seeing the catch up close, use nearly invisible Berkeley Trilene Professional Grade fluorocarbon. Incredible shock strength, abrasion resistance, and knot strength gives you the confidence to fight the fish with less concern for loss. The line's higher density helps it sink faster, causing less bow in the water and higher sensitivity. And all this will help you land more fish. Come be a part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Another heavy fish. It's coming up. Big old fish. Oh, baby. He just won't quit. Let me strip that line and bulldoze it. It's so big it can't even jump. Yep. Tore it up. Look at him cruise away. There he goes. Oh, wasn't he pretty? Woo! A few minutes ago, I was talking about jig colors and trailers. Let me show you what we're using today. It's Bass Pro Shop's 3 8 ounce Enticer Swim Jig. And we've got it hitched up with one of Bass Pro Shop's 3 and a half inch Swimming Elite Chunks. Woo wee, what a combination. But like I said, this bait and these trailers are available in an assortment of fish catching colors and sizes. It's important to have a good selection for different depths and water clarities. All right, let's talk about weights. You know, if I had to pick one size weight for most conditions, which would I choose? Well, my go-to size would be the 3 8 Now in shallow, thick cover, my number one choice would be the quarter ounce size. But in deep water, say 15 to 20 feet, a half ounce size would be best. But the 3 8 is ideal like for what we're doing today. Oh, that's a good one right there. Oh, yeah, it's a big fish. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, look at him. You 
big old honky bonk you. That's a full grown in there. Oh, look at the size of that. That right there, boys and girls, is a good swim bait. I'll tell you some features about it I like. It's a quality belt bait. It's got a good weed guard on it. It's got a wire hook. Let me take this chunk off of it. It's got a, a wire hook. I like that. That wire hook penetrates extremely quick for quick penetration. It's got this hook keeper right here. It's got a wide gap. That wire hook, once it penetrates, it's kind of like a, a pin. You can push a pin in a potato quicker than you can push a nail. So once it penetrates, it just goes right in there real quick. Then you've got that wide gap right here, which holds. And then, as I said, this keeper right here, once the bait goes on, it, uh, it helps hold, it helps hold the bait. Once you insert the elite chunk on there, you bring it over, just mash it down, and insert that right in there like that. Just mash it down and push that in there and push it right up on the collar with the jig. And there it is, just neat and sweet as a baby puppy. But if you've never tried swimming a jig, well, maybe it's a good time to give it a try. Pick up a few at Bass Pro Shop and give one a fling and see what you think. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dams today. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.